On today's show, I'll continue my deep dive into aspect ratio. What does it mean to you at home? What can you do about those pesky black bars? And what should you buy if you're in the market for some new kit? Welcome everyone, my name is Chris, and this is your Wiggly Tech Vibe. If you're unsure what aspect ratio is and why it's important to what you watch at home, please go up here and check out last week's video. In it, I detail the history, development, and some movies which help cement it in our culture. Wide and ultra wide movies are here to stay. So, knowing this, you might as well know everything you can to enjoy movies as the director intended them. To help you out, I'm going to do a few experiments in my own home theater showing you the difference between different aspect ratios and what those black bars mean in terms of lost image and tips on what you can do to reduce them. Then I'll list several products which are worth your money that you'll fix these issues from now and into the future. First up, I've got a range of DVDs and Blu-rays to help demonstrate the differences of aspect ratio as displayed on a 16 by 9 screen at 110 inches in size. And I can see in the comments now, ha, DVDs, you're so 1990s. Everything's streamed this way, dude, you know? Yeah, 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 I agree. And you know, regardless of media format, physical stuff like disc or streaming, they all produce the same outcome. It's just that some people like buying hard copies, you know, so you can just watch them whenever you want without having to potentially pay for them again. Yeah. So first up, we're going to do a bit of experimenting in my home theater now. I've got four different titles with four different aspects. And um, this one's going to be interesting. I don't know if it's going to work, but this has actually got an anamorphic uh, denotation on it. So I'm going to try and get my Blu-ray player, amplifier, and projector to show you what an anamorphic raw picture is. Obviously, I don't have the anamorphic lens, so we're not going to be doing anything special in that regard. Just want to try and hopefully demonstrate what it might look like if this is the direction you're going to go. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so first up, Finding Dory by Pixar. Here, typical widescreen movie, and I'll put some red bars just for a bit of guidance. All right, next movie, Groundhog Day. A little bit smaller at 1.85 to 1, classic, and very little difference between that and normal widescreen. And then, the mummy. Now I'm going to pause this because I was playing around with my projector and here we've got the normal 235 crop. Now I'm going to push it into a vertical stretch mode which would fill the 16 by 9 screen as you can see right there and you put an anamorphic lens in front of that and it'll stretch it the other way. More soon. While I'm really chuffed about that I was really unsure as to whether or not the mummy was going to work in anamorphic and that's like a late 1990 DVD that I purchased yonks ago from America and of all my DVDs here, I have very few that actually specify anamorphic on it as an option. And uh, yeah, anyway, so in the end, I experimented with my DVD player, didn't work there. It's actually worked out to be the projector that did it. So you notice how it compressed the picture inwards and it filled out the picture into that space. Then when you do an anamorphic lens in front of that, it, it, will, it will stretch it back out, believe you me. I'll put a video down below, like a link to a video, or maybe I'll put it up here actually. Um, they give a great demonstration of how an anamorphic lens actually works and how it stretches the picture out. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, just go back to the last video that I did on this whole subject. So using these little markers, which was very scientific of me, I discovered that I'm, on a, when I watch a 235 or a 239 movie, I'm losing about two thirds of one meter in screen real estate to black bars. So. I definitely, definitely, when I purchased this screen, I should have got myself a 235, 239 screen. All right, so it's officially 239 these days. I've got to stop saying 235. The standard is 239. All right, let's go back to the studio. All right, that was fun. So I've shown that by projecting different movies and varying aspect ratios on a 16 by 9 screen will result in lost you know, picture to those black bars. So here's my first tip. If you're going to get into home theater, definitely get yourself a 2.35, 3.9 wine screen. Format to this will give you the biggest bang for your buck. And two important points. Don't get too small as a 16 by 9 crop will make you cry and you'll be thinking about, always be thinking about your seating arrangement. 
the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers recommends a minimum seating distance from the screen of no less than two times the height of your screen. Yeah, this is a personal thing and some would say three times it should be your minimum, but what does it mean to you and me? Is that if I have a 235 screen that's 140 inches diagonal, then it would be 139 centimeters height or 55 inches for those playing along in America. And that will equate to a minimum seating distance of about 2.8 meters from your screen. But, and this is a big one, when you project anything less than 235 content, say 16 by nine aspect ratio, then your picture shrinks because, but your position, seating position might increase. What, no, no. All right, so my second tip is this. If you're an ultra wide, if you've got an ultra wide screen, you should project it using what's called constant height method. You see, when you project a 235 image, the black bars are being projected outside the sections of your screen and hopefully not visible. Known as overscanning, if you've got good quality black velvet, it'll absorb, it will absorb the light coming from the projector and not be noticeable. In fact, another tip if you can, invest in a masking system so that the picture pops as much as possible. Here, quick demo. See the contrast between the picture and the black portion of the screen? Now, compare this when I zoom the picture and make it line up with the border. And now, here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Worlds apart, right? Now, where was I? Yes, all right, constant image height and seating position. So if you're like me and you go with a 16 by nine screen, your image size for most movies will be less than what your screen size is. Just like I demonstrated earlier, see how a 235 movie occupies a portion of a 16 by nine screen? Now, if instead you have a 235 screen, the reverse happens. The 140 inch ultra wide picture becomes or reduces down to 112 inches for 16 by nine. But now you've got black bars either side of the screen. You know, the society with those motion picture people, engineer people before, and THS, you know, they recommend um, for ultra wide pictures. So that two to three times is for ultra wide, not for 16 by nine. Okay, so it's all about a use thing. And it's something that can, you've got to be conscious of when you're deciding upon the screen and the uh, ratio. Do you watch TV and shows and play games? Or do you watch many movies? That's going to be your deciding factor. Remembering that size and seating position is a delicate balance between visual angles and visual perception. If you want more info, look below to projectorscreen.com and they've got a great calculator over there and some information around what the different standards mean and ideal position. And hey, whilst you're there, consider subscribing. I upload every Wednesday and Friday and I've got a podcast available. Win-win. Okay, so finishing off these tips, I can't stress the importance of black masks. I've searched and searched for cheap and easy ways to make them yourself and universally it's noted that side masks are much easier to install yourself without costing an arm and a leg. Essentially, you're installing curtains into your home theater setup, whereas top and bottom masks, zoom, they're a lot more complicated and something that shouldn't be done by the likes of me. Yeah. Next tip, if possible, don't buy DVDs. They've been around for more than 20 years and the resolution is nowhere near what Blu-rays produce, let alone 4K pictures. So even the market for a new player, buy a 4K one. Why? Well, it'll scale down to the whatever TV or projector you have. Hint, sometimes I actually shoot in 4K and downscale to 1080p. It actually looks better and for your home theater or future proof you for years to come. Next tip, don't buy a cheap anamorphic lens. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, click here to see my million dollar home theater. In it, I detail where they are and how they work. And for someone serious about true home theater, then this is an aspirational item that you need. But good old YouTube, there are plenty of videos of people using lenses designed for SLR cameras, you know, like the cameras you take photographs with. And um, they're not designed for home projection. So what you end up with is a significant vignetting like this, out of focus, areas of screen that have color shifts and distortions. No, what you need is good quality class, AK, okay? And they cost about $5,000 up, so I'll keep dreaming. And final tip, buy a projector that has both lens memory for position and lens shift. Going down the constant image height path will mean frequent adjustments to your projector. And to do so manually without the blessing of a button is just plain annoying. There you have it. 
Aspect Ratio 101. Key points, select the screen aspect ratio and size based upon the primary use of your screen. And know that a wider screen will enable you to sit closer to it and to buy the best quality hardware for movies and playback sources that you can. Please let me know if this has been helpful by, linking this, by liking this video and putting some comments down below. What would you do differently? Do you live in Melbourne and have a home theater or you're building one? If so, please private message me and maybe we can do a story on it. And team, stay techie.